Okay, we're doing 8 4 number 9, which is 41 in the textbook. This four, number 9 is from the online work. And it says evaluate the definite integral using the given integration limits and the limits obtained by trigonometric substitution. So we have the integral from 0 to square root of 2 over 2 of t squared over 1 minus t squared to the 3 halves dt. And I think it's simplest just to make a substitution here. Like if we said t equals our sine theta, then dt would be cosine theta, d theta. And note that 1 minus t squared is 1 minus sine squared theta, which would then be cosine squared theta. So I'm going to first look at this integration without the limits. And if we have the integral from, of uh, t squared over 1 minus t squared to the 3 halves dt, what this becomes is integral of, well, t squared becomes sine squared, sine theta, so sine squared theta. Now remember what we said before, 1 minus t squared is 1 minus sine squared theta, which is cosine squared theta. So this 1 minus uh, t squared it becomes cosine squared theta to the 3 halves, because you still have the 3 halves power out there. And the dt becomes cosine theta d theta. Okay, so what we have going on is integral of sine squared theta, cosine theta, over, and notice it's cosine squared to the 3 halves. 2 times 3 halves is 3, so that's going to be cosine the third power theta, d theta. And you can think about this as sine squared theta, cosine theta, over cosine squared theta, cosine theta, d theta. So that you can divide out your cosine theta. And we're left with integral of sine squared theta over cosine squared theta d theta, which is the integral of tangent squared theta d theta. But there's not an antiderivative for tangent squared theta. So we can use the relationship we know that tangent squared theta is equal to 1 minus secant squared theta. So the integral of tangent squared theta, d theta, is the integral of 1 minus secant squared theta, d theta. And that becomes what? No, I have that backwards. It's secant squared theta minus 1. So all you watching the video saying, wait a second, you messed that one up. You're right. There you go. And the antiderivative of secant squared theta is just tangent theta. And for just 1, it's going to be theta plus some constant c. Now we could take this uh, one more step. If we know that sine theta is t, think of that as sine theta is t over 1. If we have a right triangle, and here's our theta, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this becomes our t, this becomes a 1. This last side, if we're going to call it a, well, we have 1 equals t squared plus a squared. So 1 minus t squared is a squared. Or the square root of 1 minus t squared is a. It's not writing very clearly. So 
So we can substitute back that our answer, I'm going from this answer here, tangent theta minus theta plus c. Well, tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta plus theta, or minus theta, I should say. And we know what sine is. Sine theta is t, so rewrite this again here. So our sine theta is t, and our cosine theta is the square root of, well, we said a was square root of 1 minus t squared. So it's, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's just going to be 1 minus t squared minus our theta. Well, if we said sine theta was t, theta would be arc sine t. So I'm going to just arc sine t plus c. We're going to have space there. Okay. So if we had limits of integration from 0 to the square root of 2 over 2 of our, what we had originally t squared over 1 minus t squared to the 3 halves power dt. That would be, as you see, we worked out here, t over the square root of 1 minus t squared minus arc sine t from 0 to uh, square root of 2 over 2. And the plus t isn't there because it's a definite integral. So that means we're going to have what? Put the square root of 2 over 2 in there. Square root of 2 over 2 over the square root of 1 minus the square root of 2 over 2 squared minus arc sine of the square root of 2 over 2 minus, put 0 in the numerator, 0 over the square root of 1 minus 0 squared minus arc sine of 0. And the second part just goes to 0. So we have the square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 1 minus square root of 2, square root is 2, square root of 2, um, Sorry, 2 squared is 4. 2 fourths is 1 half. Minus arc sine of square root of 2 over 2 is pi over 4. Because sine of what makes square root of 2 over 2? Sine of pi over 4. And that's going to give us the square root of 2 over 2 over 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. So square root of 1 half minus pi over 4. That's the square root of 2 over 2 over 1 over the square root of 2 minus pi over 4. I don't know if you recognize this yet, but square root of 2 over 2 times square root of 2 over 1, because you multiply by the reciprocal, gives you 1 minus pi over 4. Okay, so that's doing it where we substitute back. For part B, we have the other case where um, when t equals 0, theta is going to be 0. When t equals the square root of 2 over 2, sine of what makes square root of 2 over 2? Well, then theta would have to be pi over 4. So we'd have the integral from 0 to square root of 2 over 2. We started with t squared over. 1 plus t squared 
That's 1 minus t squared. To the 3 halves dt, we found that to become tangent of theta minus theta from 0 to pi over 4 instead. So this is without substituting back, just leaving it in the trigonometric form. And we have tangent of pi over 4 minus pi over 4 minus tangent of 0 minus 0. And tangent of pi over 4 is 1 minus pi over 4 minus just 0. So it's 1 minus pi over 4. And we get the same thing, not surprisingly. Okay, I hope that helps.